Lebanon share with Turkey and other countries like Jordan this problem of refugees. Now, on the political run, a solution is negotiated. And meanwhile, the international community and uh, ONG organizations are financing the refugees in the countries where they are. In Lebanon, for example, we have the third of the global population made from refugees. One and a half million to two million, over four million people. Do you think that the financial through humanitarian organ organization should continue to finance these refugees where they are in the countries where they are or finance their return to Syria and I don't see really a strategy or a plan for that. What do you think? One by one or... I I think it's better to take uh, all the three, uh, all questions together, yes, because of time. Asya Alawi. Thank you, Mr. Minister, for your listing of the earthquakes. Uh, you have suggested that the regional balance and the global balance should come together just to put everybody together, the stakeholders you mean, in order to find the appropriate answers. Who you think would be capable of just bringing together everybody since Mr. Trump has disqualified him America because it has taken sides against Iran, since you are uh, ruling out the United Nations. So what authority, who can do that? This is my first question. The second is related to Turkey's role. What role do you see for Turkey in this quagmire? Because it hasn't been that clear. It seems that Turkey has been playing on, on different registers and sometimes not very lisible to the rest of the community, whether be it in the West or in the rest of the Arab world. So could you please clarify that? Thank you. Well, I, I'm glad that you have only two questions. <laughs> <laughs> Michel, as concise as possible. We, Mr. Prime Minister, we, we always appreciate your comprehensive and intellectual view of geopolitical situation. I have a very practical and maybe provocative question. Mm -hmm. Is your country, Turkey, ready to think about a regional conference, Vienna Congress format style, inspiration maybe, on a new long-lasting regional order in the Middle East where the first stakeholder will be Turkey, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Israel, I hope, and P5 countries in the back seats. Mm -hmm. So I take now Mona Ebed from uh, Egypt and uh, also Ali Aslan because he's German but from Turkish origin. So. Uh, that, and then I stop because, uh, 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 so, uh, Mona. Yes, Mona. That, that gives you time to think about the answer. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Minister. Uh, for years, Turkey was looked upon as a modern in the region, as an Islamist democratic country. Today, Turkey is accused of financing and giving asylum to radical extremists. Can you explain why? Because this is part of the Qatar crisis that you mentioned. Thank you. Merci. Uh, Ali Aslan here. Thank you, Thierry, and uh, great to see you again, Mr. Prime Minister. 
be very short. As, you, as Thierry said, I'm a German of Turkish descent. And uh, tomorrow morning we'll be discussing the future of Europe. And uh, it's no shock. I'm not revealing any shocking news when I say that <coughs> relations between Turkey and Europe could be, could be better. Um, there are even talks and there's some pondering in Europe whether Turkey still wants to be part of the European Union. I want to take advantage of your presence here today to hear an unequivocal statement and perhaps pledge whether Turkey still wants to take the road and down the path down to EU membership. Thank you. Okay. I will try. Five questions, no, six questions. One was two. Five, six questions, five minutes is not fair to the questions. Five, five and a half. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, uh, Thierry. Just for, since he had difficulty for my name, my last name, to clarify, Davut Oğlu. Davut means David. Oğlu means son in Turkish. So it is Davidson or Bin Davut. It is easier to pronounce it. Anyway, about the uh, refugees, I fully agree. There is no international strategy. Therefore, all the burden is on the shoulder, Riyadh's question, on the shoulder of the neighboring countries, Turkey, Iraq, Lebanon, Jordan. There is an urgent need of an international conference about the strategy of refugees, Syrian refugees, but in general as well, refugees, because there are Libyans and others as well. How to deal with this question based on humanitarian values as well as financial aspects of this uh, crisis. And the first priority should be going back home. But I am sure when Syrians see that Assad is still staying in Damascus, many Syrians will not go back. This is psychologically an influence on refugees everywhere. In Turkey, I know. Because they escaped from a regime, regime is still there, so that refugees strategy going back should be together with a uh, plan, peace plan on the ground, guaranteed by international powers. Then they can go. Otherwise, today, no refugee will go back when the situation is so fragile. About uh, Madam Asya Alevi's question, and one, Michel, I will connect. I, Turkish role, yes, uh, we have a good example which what we achieved. In 2003, in our first days of our government, before Iraqi war, we established a platform, Iraqi neighborhood platform, where all the conflicting parties on Iraq, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, Iran, Jordan, Egypt, all of them were around the table. And this mechanism continued until 2008, and P5, after some time, became uh, observer to this group, and this was a very successful example in order to minimize tensions between neighbors on Iraq and also create a consensus among them about territorial integrity and stability of Iraq, which was in the interest of uh, everybody. About Turkish foreign policy, what you uh, uh, mentioned, and also there was another question about it. At the beginning, until Arab Spring, even until 2013, when Daesh came to the picture, when the terrorist, uh, the oppressive regimes and terrorist organizations became two options for Arab people, not democratic choices, Turkish policy was proactive to establish a regional order. And I want to give an example about regional order. In 2010, in Arab League meeting, I was guest of honor and I uh, made a proposal to Arab League uh, leaders, ministers, and later also to the summit, a new regional order, like Vienna, uh, has been mentioned Congress of Vienna, or uh, Helsinki process, based on four principles. High-level political dialogue, today we don't have, unfortunately. Secondly, common security framework in the region. Third, economic interdependency. And fourth, multicultural coexistence. I think regional orders can base on, your, on these four principles. Without high-level political dialogue, especially in the Middle East, you cannot solve anything. Because at the end of the day, leaders decide. And without economic interdependency, you cannot have stable, sustainable order. Economic interdependency is the best way of keeping peace. And a common security approach against terrorists is 
or against any interstate tension is a must and also multicultural coexistence, especially in the cities. If you ask me which is the most uh, I mean, dangerous situation is divided cities like Berlin during Cold War. Today in Iraq, cities is being, co being called uh, Shiite city, Sunni city, Kurdish city. This is the biggest threat. So this could be the basis for a new regional order and in UN system, between UN Security Council and UN General Assembly, there should be intermediary mechanisms where regional powers can come in to be like Astana process now going on in Syria. This is uh, also another uh, way or uh, method to solve the issues. About terrorism, Turkey has been the model and yes, ah, without forgetting, this proactive policy has to be changed or forced to be changed after 2013 when Daesh came to the picture as a threatening against Turkey and terrorist organizations, when democratic wave in Middle East has been changed after uh, coup d'etat in Egypt and the old uh, leaders start to come back and they had a confidence like in Yemen, Sali, and the Arab Spring became a tension between oppressive leaders and terrorist organizations. The third option, a democratic transformation has not been supported by international groups. Turkey had to change to a self-defensive position rather than proactive position because we try to keep our territory intact. Therefore, we had to make shield, Euphrates shield operation in Syria or in Iraq, extraterritorial operations to, keep, to defend ourselves. I usually do not prefer this as a strategy, but the fragile situation in the region forced Turkey to be in that status quo and especially last year coup d'etat attempt in Turkey and unfortunately, the silence of international community regarding this coup d'etat made Turkish political elite even much more self-defensive as psychology. What we need today in Turkey as well, an inclusive new long-term strategy of democratization and stability. We cannot continue with this self-defensive position. But at the same time, everybody should understand the trauma Turkey is facing to keep democracy surviving against the threats in the country, terrorist organizations and this religious cult uh, of Gulen or other, any other new attempt of coup d'etat and also against stabilities coming, instability forces coming outside. Lastly, about terrorism. Uh, there is Mona's question. I have to be very frank, Mona. We have to make a difference between terrorist and opposition. And there, I am with Qatar. Al Jazeera, you may criticize, but without freedom of speech, without freedom of intellectual analysis, you cannot have democracy. Sustainable stability in the region can come only through democracy. And democracy means freedom of speech, freedom of press at the same time. We also face problems in Turkey, I know, but the issue calling Al Jazeera should be banned is not a way out. What is the solution? More dialogue. I, if you allow me, I want to give one striking example. In 2006, Gannouchi came to Turkey as an intellectual, but as an opposition leader in exile, Rashid Gannouchi from Tunisia. I knew him from academic life. I, we welcomed, we have spoken. Next day, Tunisian ambassador came to see me and said, a terrorist came to your country and you welcomed. It, he's a terrorist. I said, do you, do you, do you see Kanush anywhere? He cannot kill even an insect. He said, in one of his demonstrations in 1991, some people were injured. I said, problem is, you don't make any separation between opposition and terror. If you tell all opposition as terrorists, then you will be, you cannot survive. We have to make a difference between these two. What happened? Now Gannouchi is welcomed everywhere as the most moderate, most democratic wing of Islamists. And that diplomat has served in Tunisia after, even after Gannouchi came back to Tunisia. 
What we need today is we have to be very hard against terrorists, Daesh, Boko Haram, Al Qaeda, all type of terrorism. And as Turkey, we are with. I was in Paris, shoulder to shoulder with all European leaders when uh, the incident uh, in Paris after the terrorist attack in Paris in early 2015. But at the same time, we should not be giving an impression that anybody who thinks different than the existing status quo is a terrorist. Then that definition of terrorist makes terrorists more happy. What we need today is inclusive approach to opposition in national, regional, or global level, more dialogue, more freedom, but be hard as much as possible against terrorists who are taking gun in his hand, who use violence against people. This, is, this sh it should be a differential. Turkey, despite of all these difficulties, will continue to be, we hope, a good model and example for everybody. Thank you very much. I hope I have yeah. answered all the questions. Uh, yeah. ah, ah, sorry, Ali Aslan's question about ah. Turkey EU. This is, please, Ali, don't think that I, this is my secondary issue. Turkey European Union relation is not only important for Turkey and EU, but also is a peace uh, model for inter religious, intercultural uh, coexistence and harmony. Therefore, our government in 2000, the first strategy was making Turkey full member to EU. But in 2004, we got this decision. And unfortunately, from after that, we had several difficulties. I want, don't want to blame this or that actor. But there is one thing clear. Turkey had to face many uh, uh, double standards, let me say regarding Cyprus issue, regarding other issues. Despite of this, Turkey has continued. The last attempt, when I, elect, I was re-elected as prime minister in 2015, 1st November, my first target was to rearrange Turkish-EU relations. And it was a success story on 18th of March. The deal between me and European leaders, uh, Prime Minister Merkel, President Hollande, and all the leaders, and we achieved, not only it was a strategic agreement, not only solving refugee issue, but putting Turkish European tra Union track on the right path. Visa liberalization, re-adjustment uh, of uh, custom union, uh, and all the other pending issues were in the package. And when I decided to resign, from, to leave my position, the first thing I did was I called uh, uh, Mr. Juncker, our close friend, I said, I am resigning. But you must continue this process. And in July, in June, they were, we were expecting to get visa liberalization. And I also to, told to the new Prime Minister of Turkey that this should be the new, the most important priority for the new government. But unfortunately, after that, there was a huge tension and Europeans did not fulfill any of these promises, despite of the refugee issues has been solved. And this, now what we have to do, all of us, instead of provocating emotional rhetoric between Turkey and EU, we have to be rational. Turkey needs EU. As a Turkish citizen, we, I am telling, we need. And nobody can separate isolated Turkey from European continent. And European Union needs Turkey. The only thing is to sit around the table put everything on the table in an honest manner, transparent manner, and start a new process. Thank you.